Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a delight to have you here this morning as we worship together and think about where celebrating in our midst, where joy is in our midst, and experience the goodness of God in this space. If you're worshiping with us on Facebook, you, we welcome you to this community as well. Whether you join us weekly or this is your first time, we want you to know there is a community of faith that cares about you. Today in worship, we are going to be talking about what it means to celebrate our wins. I want you to be thinking about what in this last year can we celebrate? Can we lift up to God and say, we have done this well, all right? And so during the sermon, I'm going to ask you to shout those things out, to holler them out, no matter how you want to say it, so we can celebrate it today. Everything you need for worship will be found in your United Methodist hymnal or hymnals or in the bulletin. And I'll make notice to you, you have a separate sheet. Uh, we thought the whole song was in the Faith We Sing Pew edition for the last hymn of the day. It isn't, so we gave you a sheet with all the verses in it so you can sing along. And you will not need that until the last hymn today. With that said, let us share the announcement. Good morning. I'm Mary Ellen Lewis, and your liturgist today. I want to uh, encourage you to look at the announcements on the back of the bulletin, and particularly note the 90th birthday party that is coming up to celebrate the life of Liz Isaacson. And they're asking for RSVP there to Sue Harmon. So if you'll just take note of that today. Are there any other announcements? Seeing that there are none, let us stand as we are able and join in our call to worship. Here in this place, God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here, the warriors and wanderers can call on God by name. Here, in this time. We remember all the ways God's us. Here, in these moments, we are reminded that God is with us always. Here are gathered those daring enough to step out of comfort into the unknown. Here in this faithful space of worship. We will be with us. In the midst of changes and challenges, joys and blessings, we dream of a future with hope. Here in this place of celebration. Let us open our hearts and sing together hymn number 2284 in the faith we sing. Please be seated if you can. 
We come to a moment in our worship service where we share our joys, the joy that we carry with us throughout the week, and also those things that have bothered us, frustrated us, or concerned us, to turn both over to God. So I ask you now to take a moment to share the joys and concerns of this congregation. The people of Maui. The people of Maui we need to lift up in our prayers today. A joy for grandchildren that arrived safely from Montana. A joy for grandchildren that have arrived safely from Montana. Thank you. Let us be mindful of the ways God has been in our week and throughout our week as we pray for those many people that are on our hearts and minds. Join with me in the opening prayer, which will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. God of joy, let your abundant joy wash over us today in worship. Ignite us with a passion to celebrate your image in the world, in the workplace, and in the many directions our week may take us. We praise God for the Lord who loves. We praise God for the Lord who cares. In the midst of our weakness, when we feel lost, unable to find, there is one who seeks, one who finds, and one who searches. We rejoice. With the generations of the past and the generations to come, we rejoice with song. We rejoice in community. God, we come to you today, mindful of those that we have lifted up. We are mindful of the people of Maui. We are mindful of those that have carried deep concerns with them this week, those that have had natural disaster, fires raging in their lives, been displaced, cast aside. Often before we are aware, we were lost. It is strange how things happen. It was just one of those days I've decided to make a change. These are the words we use. But you find us. Even when we forget, there is a way to be found. God, for those that are displaced, those that feel displaced, no matter where they're at, let them know that there is a God of love that finds them. Rejoice and be glad with us, for that which was lost has been found. For I have been found. For we have been found. In the name of the God who celebrates with joy, we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. scripture reading today is from the book of Luke. And it helps us to understand, to know, to realize two occasions to celebrate. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus then told them this parable. Suppose someone among you had 100 sheep and lost one of them. Wouldn't he leave the other 99 in the pasture and search for the lost one until he finds it? And when he finds it, he is thrilled and places it on his shoulders. 
When he arrives home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Celebrate with me, because I've found my lost sheep. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who changes both heart and life than over 99 righteous people who have no need to change their heart and lives. Or, what if a woman who owns 10 silver coins loses one of them? won't light a lamp and sweep the house, searching her home carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Celebrate with me, because I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who changes both heart and life. Now we will move on into the Psalm 126. This is a pilgrimage song that was sung by worshipers as they Move toward Jerusalem for the celebration of three festivals of Pentecost, what we know as Pentecost, and what we know of as Passover, and what we know of as the Festival of Booze that we celebrate around Thanksgiving time. When the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, it was like we had been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter and our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at that time among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us and we are overjoyed. Lord, change our circumstances for the better, like dry streams in the desert waste. Let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joyful shouts. Let those who go out crying and carrying their seed come home with joyful shouts, carrying bales of grain. These are the words of the God for the people of God. Thank you, Thank you for, for reading the scriptures this morning and giving us a little insight as we come together to what the scriptures have to say. We are in the midst of, at the end actually, of a sermon series on what it means to have dreams, aspirations, and hopes. And I hope, my hope as John Bailey, is that as you've heard this, you start to think about where Windsor United Methodist Church can have dreams, can has aspirations, can have hopes for the future. Can we still be people with dreams and hopes? And I would say, yes, we can. And, and as we go through this next year, hopefully we can find that in different ways. Today, as we think about this last sermon series, we were reminded of the first week we got together. And I told you that having a dream can change or does change everything. Last week I said we are people of possibilities. God is a God of hope. Therefore, we are people of hope. It is that simple. What does it mean to bring hope into the world around us? And today I want us to think about what it means to celebrate our wins. For we can start with those dreams and those aspirations. Remember the first Sunday I talked about being under the table and dreaming? That childlike anticipation, that childlike way of looking at the world, 
that still presents not the what, what won't happen, but what could happen, right? It doesn't look at the world and say, well, that would never happen because of X, Y, and Z. But it looks at the world and says, that is a possibility. We talked about what it means to let go of the big buts, right? That we have as a church. The things that lessen and restrict. Today I want to talk about celebrating. Hope can be the most important thing as Christians that we can carry with us into the world, through the world. It's from God. It is important for us as a church. We can see all the pain. We can see all the suffering. We can see the need in the world. The church must speak hope into all of that. Hope into people's lives that something can be new, something can be different. Something will stop things from being the same pain and suffering that it always was. We must be people that carry that hope, produce that hope, and create that hope. When the church produces hope, it focuses on what God is doing in the world that is good. Today's sermon is about that, focusing on what God is doing in the world that is good. Will you take a moment to be in prayer with me? God, as we come before you today to think about where the scriptures are leading us and where they've tugged on my heart throughout this week, where they've opened my eyes to where you are in the world and where they have something to say to our congregation, to your congregation. Lord God, God Almighty, may the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing and acceptable to you. In your holy name, Amen. May Hernaz Barazi, the recipient of the Canadian Future Entrepreneur Award, says in a TED Talk name, to achieve success, start detecting your small wins. That often, when we fail to celebrate our wins, it's because we have an unrealistic expectation of what it means to have a win. She goes on to say, sometimes we place the goals so lofty in the in the air, that no one and no one could ever achieve them, let alone celebrate them. The expectations are sometimes too big. She says it this way, it's like you have an ant waltzing across onto one of those big, huge, semi-truck scams. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen it on the side of the road. And you have this little ant that has come on and has started to, to walk onto it. Now, the operator of that scale will not see anything registered, right? Not one thing is registered because the scale is calibrated for something much bigger. But she says this. There is an ant on that scale. The semi-truck scale, the ant... The person behind, the frustrated, angry, and sad resignation to not try anymore because that thing is too small. She says, we must pack and stack and put all those little ants, celebrate each one of them on that scale. And here's the beauty of it. As you start to put more and more on the scale, at some point, they start to register as big, huge, lofty things. It's easy when we have the expectations of something weighing big in our culture or weighing big in our church that the little things that we do go unchecked and uncelebrated. We get that frustration, that anger. Maybe even that sadness, that resignation, that nothing will change. 
work and the change in the world around us. Virtually our scale of expectation, it becomes useless at that point. But celebrating your wins in the church is not about just the big stuff. It's not about the big, huge, lofty things. We celebrate our wins no matter how big or small they may be. And she goes on to say, it might look like, it might not look like much, but when it is happening to celebrate your wins, when they're this small, more like habitual actions that are strung together, it might not look like much but it can create big differences in our life and in the life of those around us. I worry sometimes in the church that our goals are so lofty and we want those big wins, those huge wins, right? That we sometimes forget that God is working in our midst, whispering, moving, gentle breezes. We want the full cues Remember last Christmas, or the Christmases of past, when the Christmas Eve service was packed to the gills and overflowing out of, in many services, right? Many services that we had. We remember those days, or Easter morning, when we had people all over the church celebrating. And we expect that every Sunday. Otherwise, we feel like we can't celebrate. Remember the days maybe when we were flush with resources or want and have the expectation of being flush with resources, plenty of people and plenty of money. I've only been around the church so long, but I know that might have never been the case. And maybe even it shouldn't be the case. For we are a nonprofit, we are a church, we operate under a different understanding, and it is not a zero sum market here at the church. The expectation of being flush with money may never come. We want to celebrate the win of having no problems. Remember the Desert Father last week who said in the 300s, he said, no problems, no possibilities. You remember that last week when I shared that? We want no problems in the church to celebrate those big wins. And no longer have to worry or to have any doubt or any frustration in the church. But guess what? We are a church. We're a community of faith. Built on relationships and people. And people come with problems. They come with frustrations and worries and doubts. They come in the midst of the culture around them and wonder, where is God here? They rub up against each other. They create tension, friction. And problems will always be part of the church. If our expectation is to have full cues, flush with resources, no problems or worries, well, that scale might be too might be too big. If we place our expectations too high, both on ourselves and our, on our community of faith, and dare I even say maybe even on our pastor, we are going to have a hard time measuring anything on that semi-truck size scale. And when will we be able to sell? But, but, but. When you put those winds together, the small things, the whispers, the gentle movement of the Holy Spirit, we find that there are great things operating and moving in our midst. The scriptures today, two parables from Luke and one of the Psalms speak about celebrating joy. The scriptures from Luke are interesting 
because they come after several chapters where Jesus is talking to the people of faith about what it means to have a genuine change of heart. He contrasts this over and against going through the motions of religiosity, doing things over and over again to the point we forget why we did The lost sheep and the lost coin are presented to us this morning. If we were going to continue to read, we would hear what's called the lost son, which many of you in the pew might think is called the prodigal son. The lost sheep and the lost coin are a rhetorical response to the Pharisees who have grumbled that Jesus is doing things with sinners and people in need. Oh, faint of heart. Can you imagine that Jesus would eat with people who are not perfect? Pharisees. We hear a lot about them in the church. They're the section of people that want to carry God and ritualize uh, worship of God out into the world with them. And sometimes they do things over and over and over again to the point where they forget why they did them. And Jesus talks to us once again about what it means to follow God. What it means to be part of a genuine change heart. He talks to us to have joy. He says there's sheep. 99 of them are secure. They're feasting in the pasture. They've done what they need to do. They're there. One of them has gone astray. Has lost their way and is now caught in the brambles. What does the shepherd do? Is it a numbers game? I've got the 99 here. The one is expendable. I'll stay with the 99. No, the shepherd goes and looks for the, 90, the, the 100. Finds them and brings them back. A woman, low on income, we assume, with not much money to her name, maybe a widow, as it says, has lost the coin that is so important to her livelihood and everything that she has is tied up in that coin. Listen to that. Everything she is about is tied up into it. She's lost it. What does she do? Does she say, well, maybe there'll be another coin that comes? Or that one isn't that important. No, she turns up her whole house, inside out, every inch, inspected and clean and assessed to find that coin. And what does the shepherd do? And what does the woman do when the coin is found? What does the shepherd do when the sheep is with them again? They celebrate. They celebrate. They shout with joy. Celebrate. And Jesus says this. Celebrate with me. In the same way, I tell you, joy breaks out in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who has changed both heart and life. Celebrate with me. Celebrate. There's something and the stark contrast between the righteous people, quote unquote, who have no need to be found and the ones who change their life and heart in the presence of God. Celebration breaks out not just here on earth, but in heaven above with angels and everyone. There is celebration and joy. Those that think they are already found, and those who know they are lost. There's a contrast between them. Psalm 126 is a psalm, a song, if you will, 
that would be sung by the people that were traveling in for pilgrimage, as Mary Ellen said. For the festivals, as they came into the place of the temple, as they were looking forward to what God could do for their lives, they would celebrate on the way. And it says, let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joyful shouts. You can't read this with a mundane voice. You have to read it in celebration. Let those who go out crying and carrying their seed come home with joyful shouts, carrying bales of grain. I sometimes wonder about the scriptures that ask us and say, that there's a requirement to bring praise before God. A requirement. Sometimes we hear that as requirement is for God. For God's benefit. We imagine a God that might be so vain. Or a God that might be so unstable that they need praise to keep doing what they're doing. No, that's not for the benefit of God. Praise and thanksgiving is for the benefit of us. Celebration of what God has brought into our midst is for us. Maybe it is because we need to inspect, think about, and identify what we can give praise for. It's not because God needs it. It is because we need it. The psycho-physical change that happens when we give praise is phenomenal. One of the commentators that I read this week said, as they were talking about it, is that our brain is wired to see the negative. It's a prehistoric thing that we were ingrained in and evolution has kept on to. Back when we had to fight predators and saber tooth and everything and dangers were all around us and everything, we had to see the negative before the negative saw us. We had to be able to reflect on the negative, so we knew that we would not do it again. And they say that we see and hear five times as many negative things in the culture every day than we do the good. Our brains are registering the negative in the world around us. But God is good. And God asks us to be thankful for what is good to give praise and thanksgiving. To celebrate things that are going right. It reorients, reworks, redrives those neurons in our brains, those synapses that are connected, those pathways that have been focused on the negative. When we focus on the positive and celebrate the positive, each ant stacked on each other ant our brain starts to see the positive in the world around us. We start to realize God is there. God is working. God is working. To celebrate when things are going right, reorients, reworks, and redrives those neurons to see that there is good in our we have plenty to celebrate as the church. We have plenty to celebrate as a community of faith at Windsor United Methodist Church here. And I want us to take a minute. I ask you to think about things that we could celebrate. I want you to take a minute and reflect on that with me. I want us to take a minute to shout them out loud in this space, to lift them up to God in this space. It's okay. What things as Windsor United Methodist Church can we celebrate? I've only been here so long, so I want to hear it from you. Shout it out loud. Yell it out loud. What can we celebrate? Community. Friendship. Come on, keep on shouting them out. Our Our organizing school snack boxes. In organizing things for the school, what did I hear over here? Very nice facility. Yes. The ability. And so we've got, what other things can we celebrate? Been in my current job for five and a half years. Yeah, there you go. Good. What other things can we celebrate? The joy on people's face when we give them a heart. 
the joy of giving a heart to somebody and saying, God loves you, cares about you. What other things can we celebrate? The, the orange cutouts that are given to us by kids, with the hearts on it, what other things can we celebrate? Dig deep. Successful reorganization of the, of the board. Yeah, reorganizing the board and the way that it does work to be able to focus on the mission and vision of our church. This is something we can celebrate. What other things can we celebrate? The joy of music and worship. The joy of music and worship. Thank you. Fellowship and friends. Fellowship and friends. Collecting quarters. Collecting quarters for Heifer Project. And it's my understanding that we have purchased and given animals to people in other countries that use those for livelihood. What other things can we celebrate? Our organist. Our organist. Yes. yes. Our vocalists. Our vocalists that we have in this church. Yes. What other things can we celebrate? Having an awesome pastor. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and I think we can celebrate. One of the things that I've noticed since being here, less than a month in full-time working in the office, is that you guys are leaders that get stuff done. When you have decided to do something, you get it done quickly and swift, swiftly in a way that cherishes who you are. What other things can we celebrate? Our custodial staff. Our custodial staff who are friendly and wonderful. And if you're here when they're here, they have smiles on their faces and they're great to talk to. Who, what else can we celebrate? What's that? People who share their talents in a variety of ways. That this church is not pastor driven, but people driven. We can celebrate that. What else can we celebrate? Valentine's to our senior saints at home. Valentine's that we gave out to those that are our senior saints at home and in facilities so they know we care about them. What other things can we celebrate? Children's programs. Children's programs. People. An Easter, uh, an Easter what? Procession. An Easter procession. People giving when they have a need. People giving to the things when they know there's a need. That we have people who are generous. And Sunday school program. Sunday school program. And discipleship that's going on. Being what other things? For, for people who can't attend. Being on Facebook for those that aren't able to attend. What's that, Sharon? The people who handle the technology. Yeah, the people that share to be able to make that happen with Christine and others that allow it to go online. Teddy bears for Hawthorne Hill. Aww. One more time, Linda. Teddy bears for Hawthorne Hill. Yes, for Haw Hawthorne Hill, being able to help them out. We gave the uh, Windsor students uh, a meal once a year. Yeah, the Windsor School meal once a year and helping out with that. What other things can we celebrate? School supplies. School supplies that we're collecting. Our one-room Sunday school. Our one-room Sunday school and that that's going on and continuing to go on. People, we can list these things over and over and they might seem like small things that we've been doing for a while and they might be seen like small things but when we stack them on top of each other, we see that God is doing good things in and through our congregation. I want you to be looking for those things and thinking about those things and celebrating those things. Because when that celebration happens, it reorients us to where God is doing good in our midst. There's a famous Charles Wesley hymn that asks, are we yet still alive? We used to sing it all the time. Annual conference. I can see that Windsor United Methodist Church is alive. 
We don't know what the future holds. We don't know where God is going to move. We don't know what the next possibilities, the next needs, the next things that are coming around. We don't know those things. But we know is that God is working in this space. We are people of hope. We are people of aspiration. We are people that have dreams, and we are people that believe in the goodness of God and are looking for it everywhere so we can celebrate it. Celebrate the wins. And so here's the task for you. If you're in a committee, if you're on a team, if you're in a small group, a Bible study, or whatever it might be, Start to cultivate those dreams, those aspirations, and those hopes. Start to think about them. Start to collect them. Start to voice them. Start to make them known in the community. And bring them forward. And let us not have the but, 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 but. Strike them away. Cast them aside. But let us lift them up, those dreams, those aspirations, and hopes. And over the next year, when we come together... And think about what we can celebrate. Let's amplify them in every way and in every place. Will you celebrate with me? Will you have joy with me of what God can do in this space? We come to a moment within our service where we have celebrated where God is continuing to work and has worked. And I want you to continue to list those things in your mind. We come to a moment where we lift up the needs of the world so that we may know where to move and to operate. This is an intercessory prayer for the needs of the world in our community here at Windsor United Methodist Church and in the community outside the doors, the nation, and the world for itself. You will hear me pray, and I will ask you to join in those prayers as you listen. And when I say, gracious God, hear our prayer, I will ask you to respond in, and in your love, answer. Gracious God, in love you created us, and in love you sustain us day after day. In love you continue to speak to us, and in love you invite us into your kingdom. So it is with confidence that we bring our prayers to you, knowing that you hear us and will respond. We pray for the world around us, for the many who continue to suffer and call out for help. For those without enough to eat, those living without access to healthy food and have food insecurity, for those caught up in violence, hatred, and political uprisings, for those picking up the pieces after a natu natural disaster, for those desperate to find work to support their families. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for family and friends who are suffering, those struggling physically or emotionally, those working to overcome mental illness, those facing challenges at home or at work, those grieving the death of a loved one. Gracious God, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. God, you have called us to pray for our enemies to bless rather than curse those who deliberately seek harm upon us. We bring our actions and the actions of others before you now. Those who have hurt us physically or emotionally, those who have stolen hope from us, those who have spread fear, false testament, or rumors for personal gain. We ask you to bless them, O oh Lord. Open our hearts so that they may see, that we may see them as you see them, and be able to respond to them with love. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for your church here and around the world, 
that it would be a living demonstration of your coming kingdom, offering hospitality to all, ready to help in times of need, showing love to friends and enemies alike, seeking to live in peace with all. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. God, we praise you for your faithful love and for the mercy you have shown toward us. Open our eyes to recognize your presence in our lives. Give us grace to hear your call and encourage us to follow without hesitation, knowing that your way is a way that leads to life. Amen. And now, let us respond in love as we bring, as the ushers will come forward and will receive our morning offering. I also note that the gratefulness jar is at the back of the sanctuary and you are more than welcome to take some of those hearts with you and share those out into the world. Let us receive the morning offering.
praise and our thanksgiving. We celebrate the ways that you have been good in our lives, that you have built our very lives. And we turn back to you an offering, a dedication, a way of saying thank you. Thank you. Take these gifts and make them be goodness in the world around us for everyone who receives them in your holy name. Amen. Will you join me with the ending hymn, the closing hymn today, Shepherd Me, O God, which is uh, found in the hymnal, but it, the, full, the full verses are that sheet that we gave you at the beginning of worship today.